Hi everybody, this is Bentley the Compost Guy, Christy here. And this is another installment in my Worm In Overfeeding Challenge series. I believe this is the sixth installment. And once again, we are here about two weeks later. I think it's exactly two weeks since my last update. And one thing you probably noticed right off the bat <clears throat> is that the level seems to be quite high in here. Well, I didn't actually, haven't actually fed the system since the last time. What I've been sort of doing is letting it mellow out, and I added a bunch of material, some aged manure, and some material that I call compost ecosystem, and just letting the system sort of mellow out for a little while. Because what I'm going to be doing today is harvesting the vermicompost from the bottom. So it's, it's never a bad idea to let your system sit without any additional food waste for a period of time before doing that. This way the worms can spend a bit more time on processing the materials that are sort of left. And you're going to have less moisture ending up down in the zone of where you're going to be harvesting the material from. Now I should mention that <clears throat> I was starting to actually get, this system has been performing incredibly well as you'll probably know if you've been following along, but with the last batch I was starting to actually believe it or not get hints of what people refer to as sour worm bin. And essentially you'll notice there's a certain smell to that, sort of a pungent smell, it's not like a it's not like a typical anaerobic smell. It has a, a certain sour sourness about it, which is, <clears throat> of course leads to the name. But one, <coughs> pardon me. One of the other things you'll notice <clears throat> when this happens is that you'll see an awful lot of of white mites, the round white mites that kind of look like eggs, and also typically a lot of white worms. And white worms are tiny worms that are fairly closely related to the earthworms and they, they they thrive in acidic conditions so anyway I started to see a bit of that and that was part of the reason I decided to mix in some nice living type of materials like the uh, aged manure and this ecosystem stuff just to try to mellow things out a bit the, the last thing I want to do here is just create a a mess or, or try to push the system too far just for the sake of, of entertainment value. And speaking of which, I know at least one person ended up uh, trying this with, I believe, an enclosed plastic worm bin. And I apologize for those of you out there who have sort of assumed this is something that uh, everybody should be trying out with every type of worm bin. But as mentioned in the first couple of videos, I definitely do not recommend being this silly with your worm composting system regardless of what kind it is. This is something I've been doing for quite a few years and you know I certainly know what sort of signs to watch out for if things are starting to head downhill and I can I can remedy it pretty quickly but I definitely don't recommend this. This is just sort of a fun little experiment of my own just to see what what this this system can handle. So Anyway, the bottom line is the system can clearly handle a lot. And once I once I do remove some of this vermicompost, I, I am certainly going to be uh, mixing up another batch of this material that I referred to as homemade manure, which is the food that, that I added in the last video. So I just thought I'd dig around a bit. I always like to dig around a bit. The worms are a bit further down now because they're still working on that homemade manure material that I put in last time. So you can see this is sort of down where the the concentrated food zone is now. So it has certainly been going down. And let's just sort of you can see we've got some really nice 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 densities of worms down there. Now obviously you don't want to get them too close down to the very bottom of the system and it's going to be quite interesting to see what we uh, receive out the bottom of this thing. So without further ado, looks like the battery on my camera is actually dying here. So I'm going to see if we can start harvesting. So basically with the worm in, 
there is a drawstring down here at the bottom and typically when you're first setting up the system what I recommend doing is aside from tightening it I recommend actually constricting the bottom and tying it off tightly just when you're very very the very first time you set up your worm in this way you're gonna sort of prevent anything from falling out the bottom and as it progresses it firms up this is all very firm and it's it's not gonna drop so now it's quite loose and it's, it's very little is just gonna fall out the bottom it's gonna require some additional scraping so I am gonna loosen this up some more oh. I guess that brought some down. So, looks pretty interesting. I think it's fairly moist down there just because of all the wet food waste that I have been adding. And, yeah, let's see what we got here. It's gonna scrape, scrape the bottom. 